Hello, my name is Timothy Stead, and the paper that I'm presenting is entitled Electrolyte Transport Properties in Distal Small Airways from Cystic Fibrosis Pigs with Implications for Host Defense by Lee A. L. So cystic fibrosis is a genetic disorder caused by the inheritance of two copies for a defective gene, and that gene encodes uh, the cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator, or as we'll call it CFTR. And this transmembrane protein allows for um, lung epithelial permeability to chlorine and bicarbonate ions. So um, clinically, cystic fibrosis is characterized by a buildup of mucus in the lungs, which is problematic because it can trap bacteria and lead to lung infections and ultimately the fate of cystic fibrosis patients which is respiratory failure. So some statistics, 30,000 patients in the U.S. are living with cystic fibrosis and more than a thousand of those are um, more than a thousand new cases are diagnosed each year and about 75 percent of those are diagnosed by the age of two. The median predicted survival age today is about 40 years old, which is significantly better than in the 1950s, where survival was barely into elementary years. So um, although it's much better, it's still a hot um, research topic as we work towards treatments and potentially a cure. So some ele elements of this scientific paper, they studied um, membrane-bound CFTR and um, Using what we know about it, um, we are able to study uh, electrolyte transport and compare it directly um, between large and small airway epithelial cells. So they also talked about uh, how cystic fibrosis um, CFTR is related to reduced mucociliary transport, which leads to bacterial colonization and infection, which is um, the major problems uh, associated with cystic fibrosis. It also talked about how defects in CFTR lead to decreased airway surface liquid pH. So uh, if the microenvironment is more acidic or basic around these lung epithelial cells, the um, onset of cystic fibrosis um, is going to happen or it won't. Um, and this airway surface liquid is essential for our respiratory defense system. There are key differences in the large and small airways as we've studied in labs so far um, with um, the lungs and the cells of those areas. The large airways are more understood and more commonly studied and the smaller airways are um, in need of further investigation, which is where um, this paper they developed this new method in pig models where they attempted to isolate, expand, and culture small airway epithelial cells um, from both CF and non-CF pigs that they raised in a lab prior to any lung infections. So in order to do this, they had to raise the pigs and um, harvest their lungs shortly after birth so as to make sure that their lungs did not become infected as would happen with um, pigs diagnosed with cystic fibrosis. They used many immunohistochemical techniques and staining techniques as you can see in the figure to the right where they show um, a, an isolated lung and the large and small um, lung structures as you can see in D and F there. And they studied the bioelectrical properties, which um, refer to the electrolytes, the, the chlorine and the bicarbonate transport um, in these epithelial cells. They were able to control for um, control CFTR in both models based on whether they were cystic fibrosis positive or negative, and they were able to control for other ions just so that they could study one ion moving at a time. They also studied um, or measured the airway surface liquid pH and the airway surface liquid viscosity and related that all back to antimicrobial activity. So the results on gene expression were pretty profound. Um, the small airway versus large airway cell gene expression were, was very different. So as you can see in A below, um, for 
small versus large airways, there were some proteins that were highly expressed in small airway epithelial compared to large airway epithelial and vice versa. Um, CFTR increase expression is characteri characterizes non-cystic fibrosis cells, so um, healthy cells express and small epithelial airways express CFTR at a high level. So for an example, surfactant protein D um, robustly is robustly expressed in small airway epithelial, as you can see in the bar graph B. Um, it shows how different um, the expression is. And this is interesting because surfactant protein D um, reduces surface tension, which will help with mucociliary transport. And it's being investigated currently as a therapeutic option for cystic fibrosis. So that leads to my first discussion question is, um, why do you think small airway gene expression of CFTR would be so different when compared to neighboring large airways? And what is the significance of this varying gene expression in relation to CF? So then talking about the electrolytes and um, their relation to airway surface liquid. So there are specific chemical properties associated with the airway surface liquid and that correlates directly to the mucociliary transport. So the chemical properties of the airway surface liquid is dependent on these transepithelial ions being moved across these membranes, which are the chlorine and the bicarbonate ions specifically. So CFTR is directly linked to these um, electrolytes being able to pass through these membranes. And this ion expression is linked to the chemical nature of this airway surface liquid, which that pH is linked to fluid viscosity, and that fluid viscosity linked to mucociliary transport, and mucociliary transport is linked directly to cystic fibrosis. So um, what they noted was that um, CFTR-mediated cyclic AMP-stimulated chlorine currents were observed but, um, in both large and small epithelial um, cells and proper um, CFTR functioning, so in non-cystic fibrosis pigs, um, was higher. There was more expression um, of chlorine ion transport. But uh, bicarbonate ion transport was significantly different um, between cystic fibrosis, um, non-cystic fibrosis, and between large and small airway epithelial cells. So CFTR mediated bicarbonate transport um, was um, obviously different in those cases. So increased bicarbonate ion um, transport related to an increase in um, airway surface liquid pH. So it became more, it creates a more basic environment, which is characteristic of healthy CFTR functioning, um, which you would see in healthy cells, people without cystic fibrosis. Decreased bicarbonate um, ion transport, which would be characteristic of a cystic fibrosis um, epithelial cells, lung epithelial cells, uh, would relate to um, decreased airway surface liquid pH, which um, is what causes a higher airway surface liquid viscosity. So a uh, more acidic environment creates a more viscous uh, airway surface liquid. And that increased viscosity relates to uh, poorer mucociliary transport, so uh, uh, poorer ability to get rid of um, bacteria and mucus that could um, cause infections leads into my second discussion question, which is why do you think a higher or more basic pH is better for fighting infections in the smaller airways when compared to the larger airways? As always, for your reference, uh, thank you for listening, and I look forward to discussing the discussion questions in class. Thank you.